I read a lot of news articles a few years ago during the height of the pandemic about what it was like for families to be separated from each other. One story was just a little tiny one, actually. It was about a man who, at six months in to the pandemic, a man named Mort from New York City, an 82-year-old dad and grandfather, had decided that he wasn't going to meet with his family until he received the first dose of the vaccine. And he hadn't seen them for six months, and he was missing his family so much. And the reporter said, what do you do to cope? And he said, every time I start to miss them really badly, I think back to some stage of their growing up when they were really lousy, <laughs> and it helps. You know, a lot of times when you're talking to folks or you go to somebody's house for a party or a dinner, you'll see them have some kind of Sign significance in their house, a little, a little memento or plaque that will say, family is all we need, or it all comes down to family. A lot of folks really hold on to that, cling to that concept. And it's important for us to have one week a year when we come together and we talk about family, because it's one of the most important things in our life. And the Holy Family is the one that we can turn to as an example, a family we can hold our lives up to and see how we're doing. There's been some recent research that Arthur Brooks, a Harvard social science professor, has published about what he says are the four pillars that research shows are essential to having a happy life. And these are going to sound so obvious, you won't believe it. The four pillars we need to work on are our faith, our friendships, our work, and our family. Those are the four things. That should be what we focus on most. Our faith, our friendships, our work, and our family. And his research shows that we have to find some fulfillment in all four of those areas in order to feel balanced and fully alive. One of the really interesting things his research shows is that family is so important, almost nothing is worth walking away from your family. That's not something that everybody believes in our society, but it's a very important bit of research because he, he measures how happy people are with or without interaction with these four pillars. The studies show that if you are estranged from your family, if you are not talking to someone essential in your family, even if you choose it, the pain it will cause you will be very high. So there's many people that are estranged because of maybe a significant disagreement that happened in the past, or because they disagree on politics and so they would just rather not see each other, or maybe because something happened and apology and an apology was needed but it was never received. He says none of those reasons, according to the research, is good enough. He said there's only one reason, really, that you should be estranged from your family, and that would be abuse. If there's something abusive going on and you can't stay safe, then you need to keep your distance. But anything less than that, he says, the cost to your happiness is not worth it. The math doesn't work out. It doesn't work for me to say, I think I'm going to keep some distance from my family for my happiness sake. He says, that's not true. You're fooling yourself. That's not what the studies show makes people happy. One author has said that when we have a broken relationship in our family, it's a little bit like having a splinter in your heel. You feel it with every step. You can never fully forget it, because anywhere you go, it's with you. You're always carrying the weight of that broken relationship. 
So there's a lot of different scenarios going on in each of our relationships in life. And then you start multiplying that by the number of people that are here. It's a lot. And you may have a situation in your life where you'd say, but what about this one? And I honor that. I think it's important for us to honor that life can get pretty complicated. And you may have a situation that is very complex. But regardless of your situation, we all can agree that focusing on that pillar of family is really, really important. It's why we always take a week of the year to look at Jesus, Mary, and Joseph and ask ourselves some important questions about our own family life. In my first parish about 10 years ago, I met a woman named Maggie who lost her husband. And it was one of the first families that I really got close to because of a loss that they had. They owned a local business in town and they were kind of famous for being close-knit, but never more than when Maggie lost her husband. The kids and the grandkids were with her constantly. And a lot of people commented to her about that. And she said to me one time, when people tell me how devoted my children and grandchildren are to me and how lucky I am, I appreciate it. But I also tell them, it's not an accident. She said, we engineered our family to be like this. I went to every game. I, I struggled to make time for everything that mattered and I didn't miss things. I got there and, and I showed up for them consistently. And now, they are showing up for us. She said, I tell people, and she, she said, I tell my own kids, every time you pay attention to your children, it's like putting money in the bank. It's so important that we make the time that we need to. And the thing that she said that I'll never forget, the words she used is, my husband and I built our family to be like this. Now, I think a lot of us could say, wait a minute, I did a lot of the same stuff and that's not my story. And I think we have to, again, honor there's as many stories here tonight as there are people and families that are present. But the point cannot be glossed over. The time we spend working on our family relationships is among the most important time we will ever spend. I have a friend who has four teenagers, and she said this is, so far, her least favorite chapter of parenthood. Maybe that guy Mort, who was interviewed about remembering how lousy his kids were at some points, could relate. She said, I just don't get them. They're like aliens in the house. She said, and all they care about is video games. It's all they care about, video games. And so, she said, so I decided to learn the game Genshin Impact on PS5 so that now I have something to talk to my oldest son about. That's his favorite game. And he is so proud of trying to help me get to new levels. She said, I don't really like playing it, but I, I like having a better relationship with my son. And her husband learned a game called Apex Legend because two others of the kids play that game. And now he can play with them remotely when they're not together. That's the kind of investment that is so important. And there again, for those parents to do what needs to be done, they may have to step away from what they would like to be doing with that time to do what feels important for connection. So this week, I want to ask a question that may be easy to answer or it may be a little painful and I don't want it to be. But now that Christmas is such a recent memory, how did you do with family this Christmas? How was it? What was it like for you? Are you pleased with the way the interactions went? Do you feel good about the amount of effort that is being shown toward you? And even more importantly, do you feel good about the amount of effort that you're showing toward others? 
We know that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, in order to have the kind of harmony we imagine them having, required a lot of forgiveness and moving on. If you've never put yourself fully in Joseph's shoes, after the angel came to his wife and exploded his life path right before him, and when the only comfort he got was a dream that he had along the way, then maybe this is the Holy Family Week to consider how much Joseph had to swallow in order to really show up for Mary and Jesus. To not be bringing it up all the time and being passive aggressive and suggesting that Mary maybe had a little more of the story to tell him that she wasn't telling him. He had to let it go. And it's, it strikes me that when we look at the fourth commandment, the word that that's used is honor your father and mother. It doesn't always necessarily feel good. It doesn't necessarily say agree with your father and mother all the time, but honor, which has a very different character and is is a very noble way to act. Friendships, work, faith, and family. According to this research, those are the ingredients in the soup of life. But family is the broth. It carries so much of it. And so this Holy Family Week, as we do each year, we ask ourselves, how does my soup taste? And am I willing to stand by the stove until it tastes the way God and I want it to?